change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden making a video. Even though it's not the last thing that I want to do right now, it's just that I really don't feel like I have anything to say. Not because I don't have thoughts, not because I don't have ideas constantly swimming around, not because I'm not learning anything, not because I don't have great news to share, but simply because my brain is in a state of protecting itself. It's something that the introverted brain does quite frequently. It tucks in and limits exposure to stimuli and interaction. It's also something that a brain that tends towards depression does. It tucks away and tries to help you recover and heal in the midst of overwhelming environmental or mental stimulus. And that's kind of where I am. So I'm in a state of hunkering down, or at least this is the state that my brain is choosing. And I'm finding ways, as I always do, to work with that and inside of that, still get things done. But also acknowledging and realizing that there are certain things that my brain really, really does not want me to do. And one of them is to be social, uh, such as communicating with you right now. So my brain tells me, you've got nothing to say. There's nothing important to share. And if you do share something, people are gonna see that you're in a depressed state they're going to attack you so it's safest just to tuck but while this has been happening as I've been inside of this cocoon some pretty amazing things have happened I think the last video that I made where I discuss what's going on in my process was before the World Snowshoe Championships which took place on February 25th and that was a huge success I was 12th place overall, which ties the best performance I've had in a World Snowshoe Championships. And I was also third place in the Masters category, so I was on the podium with two extraordinary guys, David Laporajo, who won the Masters title. He's a three-time World Snowshoe Champion, and he's won as recently as 2013. So even though he's in his 40s now, the guy is incredible. And second place was Scott Gall, who's multi-time U.S. Champion one of the top snowshoers in the world, and he's also in his early 40s, but still incredibly fit, also a top ultra runner. So to be on the podium with those two, quite an honor. And then from the World Championships, I went on to win the overall title for the Dion Snowshoes Western Mass Athletic Club Snowshoe Series, which is the biggest snowshoe series in the US. Uh, took the overall crown and obviously the master's crown. Then from there, I went to Quebec City for the North American Snowshoe Championships, where I placed fourth overall and won the Masters title. Very, very exciting. From there, I went to the Northeast Snowshoe Championships, which I hosted, and I was fourth overall and won the Masters title. And then from there, finally, catching up almost to the present now, a week and a half ago, I flew out to Bend, Oregon, where I competed in the U.S. Snowshoe Championships and brought my partner, Jamie Woolsey, with me. And we cranked. I got fourth overall in the U.S. Championships, which puts me on the U.S. Snowshoe team. I am the oldest person ever to be in the top four in a U.S. Snowshoe Championships. Clearly, I won the Masters title. And that was on Saturday. And then on Sunday, following day after running a 10k at altitude about 6,500 feet I ran the half marathon championships which I won so I am now the US champion uh, in the snowshoe half marathon and Jamie got third place in the 10k on Saturday so she's also on the US snowshoe team and in addition to that she won the women's title in the half marathon on Sunday so we brought some great trophies home for the plant-based athletic world and also this approach this process Jamie trains and thinks and works and acts just like I do she's very similar to me and uh, it's neat to see her getting the same level of success inside of this process and inside of a brain very similar to mine uh, Jamie also won the Dion snowshoe Western Mass uh, series she won the Empire State Series in New York 
Um, she's been racking up a lot of stuff. She was third at the North American Championships. Um, so we go to a lot of the same races and we've been getting a lot of the same results. So that's what's been going on for me athletically since my last video. And why I'm making this video is that when you don't hear from me, especially at this point in the game, I've been making videos for over 10 years now, you probably know that I'm in a tucked state. I'm in a state of what most people would call depression. But yet inside of that, I can still accomplish extraordinary things. I can still be incredibly consistent and effective in certain areas. It's just that in these times, in these states, I'm limited in how many things I can be affected in. Uh, when I'm not in a depressed state, I can widen my scope and I can take on a lot more. But inside of that state, I have to recognize that if I extend myself too far, I'm going to bury myself. And then it does become an illness. Uh, so to keep myself out of that place, I have to choose what I'm going to focus on. And because I've had a relatively long period of uninterrupted training where I haven't been injured, I really wanted to go for it. I wanted to see what I was capable of doing as a snowshoe athlete uh, with a big base of training underneath me. So this has been my comeback and I'm super pumped with the results. Uh, just what I accomplished this year alone uh, to me is as valuable as anything I've accomplished in the past. And again, it's not about the accolades. It's for me about what I had to do to get them in the midst of something that would leave most people in bed every day. But instead of staying in bed every day, instead of creating a story that I'm depressed and I can't do anything, I get up, I get out, and in the middle of winter, regardless of the weather or the temperature, I was running 10 to 15 miles a day, most of the time in big heavy boots in the snow, listening to books, challenging my mind as I was challenging my body just like that car is challenging their tires on the pavement. Um, so that's why I'm making this video because many people think that when I don't communicate with you it's because I'm sad or it's because I'm broken or because I'm weak or because I'm miserable and it's none of those things. At this point in my life depression is simply a it's a check and a balance in my brain that says, okay, you've overextended a bit, we're gonna have to get smaller. And because our society sees small as bad and big and ever expanding as good, most minds inside of the narrative American or narrative Western context see anything that gets smaller as a really, really bad thing. Uh, but the way I've learned to experience it is let go of the big. The big was not good. The big was not healthy. The expansion was too much too soon, which you often see in businesses that fail. You take a successful business and grow it too quickly and suddenly success turns into failure. Same thing can happen with a human being. And if your brain is prone to depression, it's going to let you know. And it's going to say, time to get smaller. So I've been getting smaller for these past two months, really. I've made some videos in the midst of this, but lately especially, with all the training that I was doing, uh, with all the research that I've been doing, and all the travel that I've been doing, um, wow, it's really loud. And that was probably a gallon of gas in that 100 feet of space. Incredible. <laughs> Talk about optimism. <laughs> anyway. The training, the research, the travel, it was a lot. And my brain said, okay, time to narrow your focus. So that's where I've been, that's what I'm up to. But I'm not stopped. I'm not ineffective. I've just chosen where to be effective. I put my money on snowshoe success and it paid off. And that's on my resume now. They can't take that away from me. That's part of my narrative and it's part of what is possible inside of these tools, inside of this process that I relate to you. And also, I'm speaking to you now because I want you to understand that 
in these states, it's about compassion. That's the driving force. It's a recognition that you've overextended. It's a recognition that you haven't been kind to yourself. You've bitten off more than you can chew. And why? What is it that you're chasing after? What is it that you think these accomplishments are going to give you? So for me, snowshoe accolades, what is that about? Is it about the accolade itself? Is it about being on a podium? Or is it about the process and the daily engagement and the daily check-ins and the daily compassionate nurturing that I provide for myself so that the workouts become possible? And even inside of those workouts, it's not about I'm getting fit. It's not about I need to do this so I can do well in a race. It's simply about being present and being powerful. Because when I move my body, I become more present. When I move my body, I feel more powerful. And it's not a delusional sense of power. It's based on the chemistry that occurs in a human being that is physically engaged, that is engaged in something strenuous, something uncomfortable. The chemistry of power is created in those moments. Uh, and it feels good. And suddenly the world is friendlier. The world is full of possibility because what makes the world seem tiny is that we don't feel powerful enough to take a step. So when you can gently, lovingly nurture your way into a step that requires power, that requires energy, that requires effort, that requires you to be in the midst of discomfort, and you can keep doing that again and again and again, suddenly your brain says, wow, I can do something powerful in the midst of discomfort, in the midst of cold, in the midst of gray or rain or weather that's keeping people ineffective and disempowered inside. I can get outside and I can make something happen inside of that. And that feels good because suddenly I don't feel stopped by anything. I don't feel that there are any obstacles in my path that can stop me because they're no longer obstacles. They're simply things that I work with rather than things that I try to get over or around, just like depression. Depression has caused me to develop this perspective. Depression has revealed to me that I can work with challenge. I can work with discomfort. I can work with no motivation. And I can get small and I can get specific and I can get focused, and I can get present, and I can take small steps that lead to great big things. And I don't need to have this massive goal or this massive plan all figured out. I simply need to engage consistently. And if you can get yourself to engage consistently, you will be blown away by what becomes possible to you because suddenly more and more things look like doors that you can open. Whereas before it looked like a mountain that was in the way of possibility. Now that mountain looks like a door that you can grab and open and explore. And there's all kinds of opportunity and possibility there, whether it's a literal mountain or a figurative mountain. So this is where I've been and what I've been up to. And I'm going to try to get myself to talk more and more about the process from this video on in this state, in a gentle state, in a state where I'm not really enthusiastic about making a video, but I see value in it for you and for me. And I also want to get myself to a place where I feel comfortable sharing what I'm learning in the books that I'm reading because my knowledge base continues to expand and my perspective continues to widen. And this is also one of the challenges for me is that when you know very little and you get a new piece of information that's novel and exciting, you want to share it because you're certain about it. Uh, and this is called the Dunning-Kruger effect, that the less you know about something, the more confident you are in your knowledge of that area, especially if you've been given just one tiny window of access. But the more you study any particular topic, the less confident you become because you realize that it's a lot more complicated than you ever possibly imagined. 
there's a lot more gray than there is black and white. In fact, black and white are illusions. Uh, boundaries are illusory. They're constructs that our brain creates in order for us to chop the world into pieces and easily manage it. But the world is not manageable. That's an illusion. That's a trick of the mind. Uh, so I want to find a way to communicate with you from a place of uncertainty, but from a place of uncertainty that is studied and explored and considered, and without giving you ultimate conclusions, but laying out a landscape that you can explore yourself. So that's my ultimate goal, and that's where Running Raw is eventually uh, moving into. I'm currently working with someone to transition away from Running Raw and into my next stage, my next passion project, which is really about sharing possibility with people and sharing a process with people that allows them to engage in a compassionate way, no matter what's happening, and to feel strong and powerful, even if they have to get a little bit smaller in order to maintain that feeling. Uh, we can grow and we can shrink and maintain a certain sense of empowerment as we do so. We don't always need to be big and we don't always need to be small, but we can always feel powerful. Uh, and sometimes that means getting really, really small, but still we can hold on to that feeling of power and of effectiveness. Okay, so stay tuned. There will be more coming. Uh, I'm not going to promise you that I'm going to crank it out every day, but I'm really committed to coming in here and sharing with the camera, even in a state where my brain does not want me to share, I'm committed to doing so. And as always, I'm going to try to get more and more stuff up on Patreon. And by supporting this channel on Patreon, you help me to do this because again, I just had to pay uh, my dental bills for 2016. That bill came due a couple weeks ago and it flattened me um, uh, in a state now where I'm back to zero. So I've got to build back up from there and that stressor is enormous in my life and support on Patreon helps me to continue to do this. So I'm grateful for all of you that are uh, part of the Patreon community and I'm going to do what I can to get more and more exclusive content up on Patreon so that you feel that um, we're more of a community. That, that's what I want. I want to build a community there. Um, I want to include you in my process and again as an introvert dealing with uh, these feelings. That's not easy for me, but it is what I want. So uh, I love it when people reach out. Um, that definitely helps in the process. All right, so I'm going to bid you adieu, and I'll speak to you soon. I love you. Bye.